Thank you to Debbie. Thank you to Shoshana. Thank you to everybody at the B&H team here. Um, I love coming to the event space. It's really a wonderful spot where you can learn and meet uh, great photographers. Not just me, but anybody just about who you want to see and meet comes here at some point during the year. Uh, it's a wonderful location, and of course, we're in the best place in the world if you're a photographer. Right? I'm going to burn through that credit card, melt that baby right down. You were in the right place. <laughs> okay, like Debbie said, I'm Bob Harrington. Uh, this is Nikki. Stand up, hon. She's our model for today. She is super tall, so we may be sitting her down. <laughs> um, so today's presentation is on controlling your light, shooting with, uh, with grids. Uh, I, I love to shoot with grids. I've really taken my work to a different place over the past year. Uh, shooting grids because I like to control my light. Um, I'm kind of a control freak about that and certain things. And I like to be able to point my light exactly where I want it and get exactly where I want, what I want, you know, when I want it. Um, we're going to run through the slideshow. It should take about 20 minutes or so. We'll do a quick Q&A after that. And then after that, we'll start shooting. And I'll show you some fun stuff you can do just using speed lights and some grids. And then we will take a Q&A at the end, and we'll wrap it up, OK? Um, like Debbie said, please turn off your cell phones or put them on vibrate or whatever. Uh, hold your questions to the Q&A section. And then we'll just motor right through, OK? Um, that's it. All right, so let's start with the slideshow. Welcome to the B&H Photo Event Space, Lighting with Grids and Controlling Your Light. Um, OK, I'm going to be showing you is the first few slides are, of course, all about me. And then the next slides will be all about my current work within the past month, month and a half, shooting grids. I have some behind the scenes shots uh, and some really cool stuff to show you guys. All right, so that's me, Robert Harrington Studios. Uh, that's my website. I'm on Instagram. And my email is bob at Robert Harrington Studios. If you have any questions, you can always email me. I will get back to you. Can't guarantee it'll be in a timely manner, but usually within a couple of days, I'll get back to you, OK? Uh, you will not find me on Facebook. You'll find me on Facebook, but I'm never there, and I'm never on Twitter. Instagram is my, my thing. Um, photographic lighting uh, by Ammonite Press. It's on Amazon.com uh, or BarnesandNoble.com. Um, I wanted to write a book so you can find it on the bookshelf, and of course, they don't stock the book in the stores. They have it online only, but that's OK. And my other book, One Speed Light 16 Looks, um, is self-published. You purchase it when you want it comes in a PDF or for an e-reader or an actual book. It's really simple and easy to understand. Like Debbie said, I try to break everything down to the basics, right? Um, go to your Zen moment, close your eyes, relax, forget everything you know, and just build back up from there. And keep it simple, OK? Keep it simple. It can get complex very quickly and very frustrating. And if you're like me, you get frustrated, what do you do? You come here and spend money. Because the only way to solve any problem is just throw money at it. OK, our next slide is our sponsors. Um, today's Expo Imaging, they make the Rogue Flash Bender, which is the maker of the grid. All right, we'll go over this as we go along. Um, many thanks to Anomaly Models. That's where Nikki is coming from today. Uh, software today, this is always a question that comes up. Um, I use Capture One Pro 9 for tethering and raw conversion. And I have a new software I'm going to show you guys called Set a Light 3D. Um, I try to take behind the scenes photographs of all my work so I know how I set the lights up. And I can also teach with it. But if I don't do that, there's a great software that allows you to do that. And then you can make a PDF of it and, and throw it into a folder and have it on hand for yourself. Okay. Uh, our lighting gear for today, I'm using Nikon SB910 and a couple <coughs> SB800s. Uh, SD9 and SD8A battery packs, um, a Rogue XL Pro, XL Pro flash bender, which we may or may not get to, uh, Rogue 45 degree grids, which are these, uh, and the Photix Aries radio triggers. Okay. Our continued gear for today is uh, Manfrotto 1052 BAC light stands, uh, a Lumo Pro LP633 or Photec umbrella bracket. They stock the Photec here, right down in the lighting uh, center. Uh, Ansman 2850 milliamp batteries and Ansman chargers. Uh, that's what I use for all my speed lighting, for all my double A's. Uh, there are other brands out there, like Sanyo, uh, Imodeon, PowerX. Um, they're all awesome. 
try to get a higher end brand, stay away from the lower end brands because you just wear them out too quick. Uh, I have Ansman batteries that are five to seven years old, and I'm just beginning now to start throwing them away, you know, and recycling them. And when you sp use speed lights a lot and you're, re you're recharging your batteries a lot, it's good to have a good battery. Okay, the magic numbers. This is a question that came up a long time ago, and I decided to make a slide out of it. Um, I'm setting my camera basically to one two hundredths of a second shutter speed. Bless you. Aperture 5.6 or 8, depending on what I'm shooting. Uh, ISO 100. I'm currently moving away from Nikon and moving into Sony, so I have the ability to go to ISO 100 now. Uh, I set my white balance to custom or daylight. Um, flash, I work mostly in manual mode on my flashes, so I set my key light to usually manual mode at half power, and then I adjust from there. This is where you get into simplifying everything. Set everything once. Take your initial test shot, and if it's awful, you just adjust everything. If it's not awful, just keep shooting, right? Just make it simple for yourself. I'm not using a light meter. We'll be doing everything um, with the software and in the camera. I, I pay attention to my histogram and to my blinking highlights, right? You try not to uh, clip any highlights on the face, nose, and the T-zone here or the cheeks. Um, you don't ever want to send a photo in to a retoucher or to a... Uh, uh, an editor that says clipped highlights and it's too nasty, unless they ask for it or it's a super cool shot. Then I set my hair background edge lights to a quarter power to start. So it's key and fill, right? <laughs> key uh, is your initial light and fill lights all around the rest. So our first shot here is taken with a, a speed light and a rogue 25 degree grid. Just this with a 25 degree grid and that's it, okay? This is Marissa. This is how I got uh, in touch with Anomaly Models. She was wonderful. <coughs> I shot this in New Jersey. And if you're a Sony shooter, this was taken with this uh, uh, Zeiss Battis 85 1.8, which is just a stellar, stellar lens. Our second image, I, I moved the light back a little bit, okay, changed her pose, and pre really pretty much just lit her uh, from her eyes here to like her neckline, right around here. So you can see some of the deeper shadows on her forehead. I wasn't all that sure about this shot until I sent it to Retouch. And when I got it back, I was like, this is, a, it's awesome, okay? Remember, retouching is a huge part of portraiture, whether you're shooting models, families, even uh, corporate style headshots, you have to retouch, make people look their best. This would not be a corporate headshot, right? Because you wouldn't smooth skin that far but um, retouching is part of the process, and I have some examples at the end of the slideshow to show you how creative you can get with retouching. Okay, this is Setalite um, 3D software. This is a great deal. It costs about $40, super awesome, super cheap, and you can build your lighting setup right here, and then you can save it into a folder. And you can add, um, they have strobe lights, they have speed lights, they have all the basic modifiers, they have uh, reflectors, um, furniture, and it's really cool. So after you've built your lighting station, which is uh, what I just took with Marissa prior, where I have a single speed light with a gridded light on her face, I send it out to a PDF, and I get that, and I can print it or stick it into my folder and have it for later, for reference, okay? And it shows you the lighting, what you're going to see pretty much. your set up from behind the camera and from a top-down view of where you're going to set your light. Okay, so if you don't have the chance to take a behind-the-scenes <coughs> shot, you can build it with this. I thought that was really cool, and the, the price was so inexpensive, I just couldn't pass it up. Okay, grids and gels, okay, controlling your light and also adding color tone. In this photo, I have a blue gel underneath the model, all right? It's a beauty style headshot, and my key light is a beauty dish, and my fill light is a, uh, a, a gridded uh, one of these with a, no, fill light on this is strobe light, so I was mixing speed light and strobe light, I'm sorry. So if you look, I have a speed light on top <coughs> into a Fotix Luna beauty dish, and a strobe light on the bottom into the Fotix Indra with a blue gel on it. That gave me the tone, and I was teaching how you can mix and match not only the two systems, but use the speed light as your key light and the larger strobe light or mono light as your fill light, okay? Most everybody reverses that, and I wanted to reverse it one more time and just show you how you can use smaller light sources to get just the effect that you want. 
There it is firing. Okay, you can see the blue tone coming off the white uh, reflector down below and just adding a little touch of color contrast. This one's super cool. I'm really excited about this photograph. Uh, I just got it back yesterday from the retoucher. And I'm going to show you what I sent to her, and I'm going to show you what she sent back to me. This is what she sent back to me, uh, not yesterday, the day before, uh, late in the afternoon. She happens to be in, Czech, uh, in the Czech Republic, so there's a six-hour time difference. And, uh, but it's awesome. She, I sent her a couple of photos. I said, do whatever you want. I don't care, just do whatever you want. Because normally, I would get a photo back that's good skin tone, good color tone, nice and smooth and she went crazy and really did something interesting here. Here's my setup, okay? So if you're not using satellite software, take a photograph of what you're shooting, the behind the scene shot. Then you have that for later, right? How did I shoot that? Oh yeah, that's how I did it. So my key light is a Rogue Flashbender XL Pro, which I bent forward, and that keeps light off the background and only puts light on my subject's face. I have a Rogue Grid down below with a blue gel, with a, the top is a blue gel, bottom is a lavender gel. And if you've been here with me before, you know I'm with California Sunbounce, and I use the California Sunbounce Micro Mini all the time. Problem I'm having is that, while it's great to show everybody, nobody buys it because it's, it's so pricey. It's a pricey modifier, and if you're not using it all the time, it's really kind of hard to swallow $300 for a reflector. So I took out a piece of foam core, and I wrapped one side in tin foil. And I bounce my light off the tin foil and back up. So for two or three bucks, you go buy a piece of foam core board, go to your drawer at home, take some tin foil out, and you have a white and a silver reflector for super cheap. Okay? You figure out how to mount it to a light stand, and you're in. I use a Matthews uh, Hollywood grip arm with an extra grip head, and then I can mount it just like my California sound bounce and move it around. All right? So this really great simple look. Here is it. Here's the behind the scenes of being shot. So you can see the color transition. You can see the difference in color tone, okay? So my lower light bouncing off the reflector is just one of these right here. And my, on my key light is just a large flash bender. So two speed lights, two simple modifiers that you can throw into a bag with you and get something really interesting. This is another shot from that uh, particular shoot. This is four speed lights and four grids. I'm hoping to do this something like this today where I can bring you to from one speed light to four, okay, using just grids. Uh, again, this is what the retoucher sent back to me. Um, this is not what came out of the camera, but I do have the original. I'm going to show you what she did. And uh, I really like it because it's dark and edgy and has that twilight feel, right? She like desaturated it but pushed the, the purple tones up. I have to admit when this model came in for the job, um, the photo I had of her, she had red-brown hair, and she got out of the car, and it was purple. I was like, oh, no, it's going to ruin everything. And they really came out great. I was really happy she had purple hair. It was pretty interesting. Here's the setup. All right, she's in the station. So my key light is high and above on a Matthews uh, Hollywood grip arm, 45-degree grid. My fill light is on a background stand, 45-degree grid. Um, my hair light is on a light stand with a uh, Hollywood grip arm, 45 degree grid, and my backlight is a 45 degree grid. All you do is adjust the power settings to up and down what you want and take your shot. All right? I really like this because the light is sharp out of it, so you have a sharp key light and you have a sharp fill light. Okay? It's really a, a different and unique kind of light, but you have total control. Unlike using a softbox where you're trying to feather the light, move it off the corner, you just point this where you want the light, and away you go. Here it is with everything firing, okay? So it's like 200 sh shutter speed, probably F, uh, aperture F8, I think it was, okay? So you can see all the point lights are going, and there's nothing lighting anywhere else in the room, only her and only the background. Okay, this next slide is about retouching. So if you're a, a headshot photographer, if you're working with models, if you're working um, even commercially or editorial, everything goes to retouch because no one looks like that on the magazine cover. Honestly, nobody looks like that. It depends on how much retouching you want to do or are going to do or what your client needs, okay? So a, um, an editorial or a commercial headshot will get something different than a corporate style headshot 
as opposed to a model headshot or something uh, creative or even beauty headshot, okay? Beauty is my favorite thing to shoot. I just love working here because you don't have to worry about anything else, right? You can change the background really easily and everything happens here. It's a great place to work. Um, bodies are awesome, but what's the first thing you look at? Someone's face, right? It's all right here. So I'm a big um, headshot guy, it's my thing. Um, okay, so let's go to retouch. Okay, so on the left is what I sent, and on the right is what I got back. Okay, I don't retouch. I'm gonna throw that out there right now. Um, I have neither the skill nor the patience for that. So um, if you're asking me for retouching, I cannot help you. I don't do it, I pay somebody. And I am very happy to pay somebody because that is too time consuming for me. Um, I have several retouchers. They're easy to find online. Uh, most of my retouchers are in Europe. Uh, and most of them are in Eastern Europe because the exchange rate is so good, you can pay a little bit uh, in US currency and they make out like a bandit. All right, so that's one. Here's a second shot, right? This is what I sent and this is what I got back. This is when I said do whatever you want. And she came back with that kind of desaturated twilight thing happening and I'm super stoked, I'm really happy. I think it looks really cool, dark and edgy. It's really something. And that's my style, I really like that shadowy kind of look, okay? So I'll have drama there. She, it looks like she even added some shadow or pulled the exposure in on that right side. Um, I am very ecstatic about the quality of what she did for me. And the last one, on the left is what I sent her, and on the, on the right is what she sent back. And you can see on the left here, um, there's more red in the photo. There's more of that red gel, that lavender gel, coming back up from the bottom. And I don't know what she did or how she did it, but she really pushed the contrast and the color on the blue side. And um, I don't know if you guys like it or not, but when I opened the folder she sent me, I was really like, wow, because that's not what I do. This is not my, this is not my kind of work. And uh, I'm really happy to have had her do that for me and take my work into a different direction, right? Because when the camera feels like a dead weight on your shoulder and you're looking for something new, something like this can help you out. Okay, we all go through those periods, right? Camera sits on the shelf. I have no ideas, no one to shoot, no one's gonna sit for me, no one's calling for jobs. I'm not making any money, I'm bored, tired, and broke. And you feel like you should have chosen something else for your career. Uh, and then, this pops up. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. So I'm gonna send her another photo and say, do the same thing, because I'm really happy with that. And then the accident. So don't delete all of your photos, okay? Um, I stepped back from the station to take a behind the scenes shot, right, so I can see my setup and make sure I had it for you guys for when I teach. And when I do that, I set my camera from manual to like program auto, boost the ISO, and just take a natural light shot. So I took the shot and I came back into the station and was in a hurry. Right, and I didn't change it back to manual, so my settings were all wrong. And I rattled off three shots, and I looked in the back of my camera, and I said, nah, nah, these are no good, but I'm not gonna delete them, I'll wait till I get home, All right? I commonly wait till I get home. Unless I have a black frame, I don't delete anything in the field, I wait till I get back to my computer. And I saw this, and I was like, yeah, that's okay. Two days later, I'm like, yeah, I'm digging that, that looks pretty cool, right? It's not perfect, it's totally soft, it's blurry. It looks almost like it was shot with a ring light because it has this halo around her. But I had a long shutter speed because I was in program auto and my camera automatically for some reason seems to revert to rear curtain sync. So the camera fired first and then the flash fired last. And I got this really cool great shot, right? Um, you may not like it. Client may not like it. I like it. It'll go in my book. Right? It's just something creative, something that um, gets your, right, your juices flowing. You're saying, I want to try that again. I want to make that mistake on purpose now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Always strive to have fun. You guys are awfully quiet, but I know they told me to be quiet. Um, always strive to have fun. It's only photography. If you make a mistake, right, you can delete it or get a great shot. You never know. Right? You never know. So don't delete uh, in the field. Always delete uh, when you get home. Wait because you never know, you may have a hidden gem there, this nice little nugget 
that no one else may like but you. And you put it in your book, and when a client opens the book, they say, wow, that's really cool. Can you do that again? And you'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I can do anything you want, no problem. <laughs> We're going to go over the setup. They'd be asking me to um, go over the setup with you guys uh, on the light and the light stand. Uh, I have three lights already set up over here. But um, if you wanted me to show you how I put the whole thing together. So I have a regular light stand. It's a Manfrotto 1052BAC. This is my uh, go-to speed light, light stand. These don't hold strobe lights very well. Um, if you had a, <coughs> a Ellen Chrome or a Profoto or a Bowens or something, you can put it on this. Uh, but I wouldn't put a modifier on it, maybe a, a reflector, because they are a little flimsy on top. Um, with a speed light, you're fine. I put soft boxes on this. Uh, um, I have a two by three Bowens soft box that I use with these light stands for corporate style headshots or whatever I'm doing. And it'll hold it up fine. It'll hold up a beauty dish fine, no problem. Something heavier, I wouldn't put on it. Uh, I'm using Fotix Aries uh, radio triggers. These are simple triggers. This is basically, right, walkie-talkie. Camera says fire, flash fires, done deal. They're about $60. They had them here and elsewhere online. Um, and they're great. They're simple, super cheap, and you can buy a couple of them and be off and running. I'm using an Icon SB910 as my key light and three SB800s uh, as my back hair and fill lights, OK? So you put the flash on top of the radio trigger, turn everything on. and put it onto the light stand. <coughs> what bracket are you using? I, this one is a, is a uh, Lumo Pro LP633, but it, it is, is exactly the same as the Fotec, which they have downstairs. It is exactly the same. Probably comes out of the same factory. Just a different name, OK? Buy a good one. Uh, I have a couple of these. They're probably 10 years old, right? They don't break. They just work, and that's what you want. Spend your money once. Don't spend it twice. I've done that. I'm guilty of that. Um, you see this great thing online. Oh my God, it's going to be awesome. Cost you 20 bucks. And for 10 bucks more, you could have got something that will last you forever. You spend all that money on a great camera and lenses, buy a good tripod, right? Buy a good light stand. Buy something that's going to last you a long time, OK? You don't have to buy exactly this. I use mine all the time. These are probably six or seven years old, OK? But they work. Everything's super uh, solid, and they, and they just work. All right, we'll put the grid on, and then we'll start shooting. The grid slip in. I'm using 45 degrees. I want a, a kind of some spread here. We're in a very tight, <coughs> confined situation, so I want some spread. Um, I like the 25 degree, but the 40 degrees have been working for me. These shots here were all taken with the 40 degree. Oh, hang on, I went too far. So it's four 40 degree grids right there, OK? And uh, it's about light control, being able to control your light simply and easily. Now we'll stick this right on top of the head. We draw the little thingy here over. We lock it on. Everything's turned on. We drop the head, and we can drop the head again here. I'm also using battery packs and the battery pack plugs right into the front. If you're not using branded lights, like Canon, Nikon, stuff like that, um, you may not be able to get a battery pack for your light. However, some of the third-party manufacturers, like Bolt and um, what's the, what's the one I'm thinking of, Turbo. I can't think of the name of the brand. Um, they have attachments that will go into just by any speed light. So you just un take the four batteries out, slide their thing into it, close the door, and it will go to a larger battery pack. Especially helpful if you're shooting a lot, OK? Especially with speed lights. Um, I've never had a speed light blow up from overheating, OK? Uh, I've had them break because I dropped them. But otherwise, all my speed lights have been pretty consistent. They work all the time. Uh, if you just take care of them, your gear will last you a long time. And I run thousands and thousands of flashes through these. All my strobe lights when I left my studio are on eBay. So if you guys are looking for pro photo lighting, go around to eBay. You'll find all my stuff is there. I dumped it all. Dumped it all. I'm not even using it anymore. I'm going to go, I'm moving over to actually Bowens this year, later on this year. 
All right, so I'm using Capture One Pro 9 as my uh, tethering software. Uh, they tether right to Sony, so I was very happy about that when they also have a deal with Sony. So um, if you purchase a Sony camera, I believe that you get um, Capture One Express with it. Uh, let's see if things are working. Woohoo! All right. All right. Stand up. Come on up. I may have to have you sit down. Look how tall she is. Isn't this awesome? This is awesome. I may have to have you sit down. Just because it won't be in front of the screen, too. Can you guys see the screen okay in front, or are you going to use the side ones? Yeah? yeah. I'm going to have you sit. It may be a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah use the posing stool. That'd be great. Yep, right, right about here. That's cool. Yep, have a seat. Relax. Is it too high for you? Is it too high? Uh, not for me. Is it too high for you? No, no. <laughs> now you're more my height. Cool. Okay. <laughs> You can put one leg up on that if you like. There you go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Now, we have Nikki set. Okay. We have her on a posing stool. We have a chair here. She can move around. We can use the chair to help us pose. It brings her leg up. Bring your forearm down here. There we go. Awesome. Right? It's great to work with professionals. Not only are they tall and beautiful, they know what to do, and they take direction well. All right? We also want you to interact. I don't know. I'll... Like, I don't know who you've worked with, but I like interaction. So if you say, I hate that photo, I'll change the light. Okay. okay. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Okay. So we're going to do something um, hard and edgy. Okay. We're going to get a lot of shadow. We have a very small area to work with here. So we're going to do a key light, and then we're going to do a fill light from the bottom up. Okay. So look right to me, hon. And your part is a little more on over your right eye. Do you want me to change it? No, no, no. Can you? No, 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 keep it there, keep it there. Let's see. Oh, I'm taking it just like that. Yeah, just like that. So she's looking right to me. She has her right hand up into here, okay? Um, yeah, perfect. I'm not a big fan of hands up here unless you know how to do it, okay? And she knows how to do it. So look, when I take the photo, you'll see you won't see, you see the edge of her hand. You don't see this, okay? You don't see this. She has the edge of her hand up in here. She's going to tug at her ear. She's going to pull her hair a little bit. So you're going to see just the edge. You're going to flatten your hand out a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Just like that. Okay. So if you do put hands in your photograph, try to flatten them out and get them on the edge only. Okay. I'm not a big fan of this. This is really kind of high schooly. Okay. But like this. Um, who's on the cover? Somebody's on the cover of Vanity Fair this month. I forget who it is. Megan somebody. And now she has her hand like this. All right. She's sitting at a table. It's an awesome shot. Great editorial headshot. Okay, so we're going to light Nikki right from here. We're going to give ourselves just some point light on her face and see what we get. Nice, just like that. I'm doing this by eye, right? Okay, right about to there. You okay? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> you don't sound convinced. <laughs> All right, what do we say? Let's try that, okay? If you know me, you know that I take a test shot and see what we're getting. Okay, so I'm going to take our initial test shot. Yeah, right up to me, up to here. Perfect. No head that way a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Ah, ouch. What do we think? Way too hot. That is way too hot. Ah! Well, it's on there, but not here. Okay. <laughs> so what are we going to do? What do you guys want to do? Take the power down. Take the power down. I would definitely take the power down first. Why would I do that? Anybody? You're happy with your aperture. Hey. Who said that? Me. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff. I'm happy with my aperture and my shutter speed. Outstanding. Always try to go, especially on speed lights, try to power down. Also, because if you're shooting at 1 16th power, you have, your batteries will last you forever, OK? If you're shooting at half power, you're going to deplete your batteries quicker, all right? But shooting at a lower power setting, you're going to keep your batteries fresh for a long time, which allows you to work for a longer amount of time. Normally, uh, my shoots are not full day jobs, right? Um, you're bringing in a couple of people, hour or two each. 
and that's about it. So you can turn these things off. You have time to recharge your batteries. But you don't want something to go down during the middle of a job, right? OK, let's try it now. Yeah, up to me this way. Put your hand down. There we go. I like that better. Oh, that's blurry. There we go. Much better. What do we think now? Yes. Much better. All right. Exposure is dead on. Let's just double check our, well, it's not here. <laughs> I was going to double check our clipped highlights, but um, we can't because this, I can't get to my software. So not a problem. OK. We like it. What's that? OK, but I can't touch it. Oh, drag the mouse over. <sighs> nice. OK, we're still clipping a little bit. See that? So what are we going to do now? Drop the power down or drop our aperture? That's about a one-third stop. Once you begin to see your clip highlights, you just realize how much uh, you're clipping. That's about a one-third stop clip. So should we drop the power down again? Power. Power. Raise your hands, unanimous or not? Power or yes or no? Power. Drop your head like that. There we go. Perfect. We'll pull the hair off of your face. That's it. Yeah, nice. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Much better. And I am digging the black on black. OK? Totally digging the black on black. I'm like, that is awesome. She has this dark brown chestnut, maybe, hair? Yeah. yeah, beautiful, long, straight hair. Look at what falls on her on the left side of her shoulder. OK? It's perfect. You're perfect. <laughs> All right, so even look, now look at the background. We're getting a little, just a touch of spill over on the left side of the frame. Right side of the frame is darker. We're getting just that itty bitty little touch of spill there, OK? I like this deep shadow. All right, this is a deep shadow kind of look. Your gridded light's very tight. We're lighting the broad side of her face, getting a little light down here. Her top is sucking up some of that light. So any of the, um, any of the folds in the top that are sitting there are getting lost because the black is absorbing all of that light. Let's take one more shot like this, perfect. Nice, right? Really dark, really elegant. Um, I'm all about that. So what are we going to do now? We're going to bring up a little fill light on our face. While I love these deep shadows, I want to pull some of those shadows out just a little, 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 little bit. So we'll add our second light. And our second light is a speed light. SB800 on a background stand, so it's a teeny tiny Manfrotto background stand. I'm going to drop my power down to equal what is up here, which is 1 16th minus 1 3rd. OK, and I'm going to drop this by two stops. I just want a kiss of fill. And if I don't like it, I can always push the power up. So one stop, I'm at 1 64th minus 1 3rd stop, OK? So I, this is low power. Watch this. There's like nothing coming out of here. But I like how we have our key light coming this way, and our fill light will just bring some of that up under her chin, under her nose, under her eyes, and under her hair. OK? I'm going to raise it up just a touch. Point it just a little bit forward. That should be it right there. That should be good. OK? The difference is subtle, very, very subtle, incredibly subtle, almost non-existent if you ask me. I think we're going to push the power up and bring it up a little more. What do we say? Yeah. I may even aim it just a touch more, make sure everything's on. Yep, it's working. A little touch more towards her face. We'll push it up about one stop. So about, we're one stop in between key and fill. Ready on? There it is. There it is. 
See the difference? Now you can see how the shadow under her chin is being diminished. Even though it's still there, it's still being diminished, okay? We still have our uh, shadow under the nose. We have a, little, we have a brighter um, fill light in that second um, catch light in her eye. See it? You can see the second catch light. Oh, it's almost stronger when she moved her head out of the key. Bring this shoulder to me a little bit. There we go. No, go the opposite way. Yeah. Actually, bring this leg up and drop that leg down. There we go, and head that way, yeah. Do you know if just touch? They're perfect. One more. Awesome, okay. We have, we're going into that classic, almost 40s Hollywood glamour range, right? We have a little tip, a little there on the tip of her nose, but I can live with that, right? Because we have a beautiful exposure on her face. If you have to repair just a touch, that's okay. Let's see, I'm going to turn the clipping off for the moment. Right, we have a beautifully executed, simple portrait with two gridded speed lights. All right, now we're going to add a hair light, and then we're going to add our uh, backlight. So a hair light with someone like Nikki, you're going to need to be at this power setting or slightly above. Anybody know why? No. Nope. Well, the distance always comes into play. She has dark hair. And what's, if your hair is dark, what's it going to do? It's going to suck up the light. It's going to, anything dark is going to absorb the light, like her top absorbs the light, right? That's a beautiful, simply elegant uh, headshot. We're going to add just some hair light and bring up um, the left side and on her left shoulder and hopefully some on her right shoulder, okay? We're sticking with the 45 degree grids. There, they're on. See if you're going to run away. Turn everything on. So I'm going to start, I'm going to push this up to back up to a quarter power where we started, all right? Because she has such dark hair and because her top is dark, let's see what, if we can push it right up and really open up this left side of the frame, okay? Actually, I'll show you guys a trick. If you reverse your speed light, there we go. I can see my power settings here, and I can actually, as long as I can reach them, I can adjust them. I think right about there, what do we say? No, up a little higher. This is an eyeball deal, okay? I'm eyeballing that, I think we got it. I think we got it. Cool. <laughs> Let's test everything, close your eyes, I'm gonna test to make sure everything works. It works, but it has to come over. Okay, so if I stand out in front, I'm kind of missing your head completely, <laughs> which is not good. There we go. Let's try that. All righty. Ready? Head this way a bit and come in towards me, almost like you're coming around the corner. No, around this way. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it's a little hot. It's a little hot. I'm going to drop the power down. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the light down. Before I touch the power, I'm going to drop the light down and get some more light on her shoulders. See how her shoulders aren't separated enough? Okay? If we drop the light down just a touch, we should be able to hit her shoulders. You have to remember that when you're shooting with grids, yeah, I think I'm just going to do this. Everything's a point light. Everything is on point. So if you miss your aim just by a little bit, you're going to miss the whole thing. So it's kind of like you have to ask your client to be patient. Or if you have the ability, have someone sit in for you, right? Do all your testing first and have your subject come in and boom, just start shooting. But there's always that adjustment period. There's always that period when you're like, ah, why don't you go get a cup of coffee? It's gonna take me a while. Now I think we're there. I like it. What do you guys think? I think it's a touch too hot still. But I grabbed that shoulder on her left, almost too much. See how it's opening up her hair underneath? Don't think I'm digging that too much, you guys? 
No, I don't like that shadow at all. So we'll do something else. You know what we'll do? We'll move this over a little bit, and we'll take it off of the back of her right side there, just like that. I'm going to drop the power down by maybe two-thirds to lessen the uh, light on her head so we're not um, clipping any highlights on her head. Perfect. There it is. Boom. Can you cover your ear? You need to have, we need to have it, you styled like poof. <laughs> totally poof. Okay, perfect. Yeah, now, now, can you swap legs? I liked how your legs were the opposite time. That's it, that's it. Yeah, there we go. Can you bring your head this way a little bit? A little more this way? Right there. Did we nail it? I think we nail it. I think we're there. Yeah. I even like, I like that one a lot. I would just Photoshop that ear out a little bit. Chin down a bit, eyes down, eyes down. There we have it, 1963, Albertus <laughs> Magnus College. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what do we have in the background? We have a dark background. I dig the dark background. I love that black background, man. It is so mysterious. Um, we have a black top. We have chestnut brown hair. We have this beautiful face, right? It's going to be awesome in black and white. But I want to open up that background a little bit. And for this last light, we're going to put it right directly behind Nikki, and we're going to aim it right at the wall. These can be difficult because if she begins to move, if she really begins to move, it can really change the background look, okay? Which I'm not averse to, but if you're looking for a specific look, you want to keep your model or your subject in one tight area, all right? Um, however, if things do, do change, things do happen, we have a happy accident, right? So I'm going to start at one quarter power. We'll keep everything the same. Let me just double check. I'm going to fire off all the lights on just one second, make sure everything's working. You close your eyes so I don't kill you. Oh, I think we're, oh, pardon me. I think we're there. Yep, nice. Whoops. Okay, ready? What do we think? Too bright. Ouch. That is way too bright. Should we raise it or should we lower it? Raise it. Wait a minute. Lower the power. David, right? Lower the power. Should we raise the light? Yes. Okay. That was unanimous. Well, you finally said something. Okay, how much power? One stop down. One stop down. One quarter power to one eighth power. Awesome. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Right? Let's see what we get. Up to this side again, right to there, chin down, right there. Head this way a touch. What do we think? One more stop. One more stop down. It's still too, too bright in the background. Absolutely. Still too, too bright. We want to make sure we're capturing her uh, top of the hair, separating her shoulder. I don't know if I like this down here. I may have you pull your hair off that side completely. Yep. It's a little higher with the light too. I think so too. It's either that or we'll go a full stop down. We're going to lower the light actually. See if we can pick this up a little bit. This may be the better move. Yeah. You got it. Perfect, just like that. Not like that, though. That's, that's, that's 1953. <laughs> I want you to um, lean, into your, lean into your leg. Lean in like this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now bring your head down, almost like you're coming around to me. There it is. It's 
It's too high in the back, isn't it? Face me this way, right there. We have mixed questions here, okay? We have a double light. We have light hitting the background from all these lights firing and spill. And we have our background light, I think is too, too high. Just too, too high. I think power we're on. I think we've gotten power. I think we need to drop this down back to zero. No angle, right about to there. Level it out. Let's see what we get. Should we raise this up a little bit? Perfect. Oh, I think we got it right there. Right there. A little bit of hair. Fix the hair. We have to fix the hair. I think we're just about where we want to be. Yeah, pull the hair off your side. There we go. Even if you, uh, that's it. Put your, uh, that's all, that's it, yeah. And bring your head, bring your, no, around this way. See, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Actually, bring your shoulders around. Perfect. Okay, now get modelly. Put your hands up into your, yeah, there, both hands. There we go. Come on, come on, wake up. No, you can drop your hands down. There we go. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Okay, both hands down. Bring your shoulders back and go. Oh. What do we think? Well, we have loop light. You're looking at loop light. That's, that's loop light right there. Under her nose, loop light, loop light. That's loop light. See the loop? Now you're at loop light. You're not on uh, Rembrandt. If you want butterfly, we can change up the butterfly. How are we going to do that? Anyone know what butterfly light is? Exactly. And our, our, our key light will be exactly on top of our fill light. <coughs> and you have a traditional over and under light, okay? This is where you're going to get butterfly, and butterfly is where the nose reflects upon itself right on, underneath her nose on top of her lip, okay? So I'm gonna, I'll use the slide over just a touch because you're going a little bit that much, yeah, that way. Perfect, I'm gonna lean into me. There we go. Let's see what we get. Yep, I want you to turn that way. Yep, turn all the way. Keep going, put your torso, your belly towards the back um, light stand. Put your right hand on the chair and swing around to me. Perfect. Hang on, I'm gonna come over here. I think I'm getting that back light in, all right? Yeah. I'm kind of digging these right here, right? See the butterfly light under her nose? That's butterfly, perfect. You have a typical over and under style light, very tightly controlled. Do the same thing, come back around to me, yep. Yeah, and come into me. Now look off to that side. Kind of a, there it is. No, put your eyes in the center of your head. 
So when you look, go, don't go like this. Look at me. So keep, <laughs> keep your eyes straight with your nose. So when you look to the left, you're at least looking straight. There it is. Okay? I like that a lot, don't you? That seems to work, okay? I could stay all day and shoot this. Not that one. I like that one. I do like that one a lot. All right? That's your butterfly light. Okay, we're back to loop light. The loop light just loops over, so your nose is going this way, and the light just loops down like that. That's all there is to it. I like this last set. It's very classic looking. Let's, um, all right, very simple black and white, all right? Very nice look. Okay. So since we did, we did, we knocked this out, didn't we? You like them? Yeah. All right, good. She's happy. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to the, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull all this back, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a XL Pro with the strip grid, which is the next level up, all right? And then we're going to add a couple of these grids around, okay? So you can stay right there. Just going to swap some modifiers around, no, no problem. So if you guys want, let's do a, a, a quick Q&A while I am swapping everything around. These are all 45 all 40, So Charles asked if they're all 45 degrees. Yes, they're all 45 degree grids. Go ahead, anybody? Go ahead. Yes? Do you, do you always shoot tethered now? I, uh, do, what's your name? Bruce. Bruce, I do. So Bruce asked if I always shoot tethered. Um, no. I would like to more, but no. Um, I'm no longer in my studio space, so I'm really um, mobile, so I don't shoot a lot tethered anymore. I would prefer to, because instant proofing on a laptop screen or a bigger screen is awesome. Um, I highly recommend Capture One because the tethering option is so easy, right? You open the software, <coughs> plug your camera in, turn it on, and you just go to work. Um, I, I also, it's twice as fast as Lightroom. Um, I don't, I haven't used Lightroom uh, in a couple of years. Uh, I'm not just tethering. The tethering, yeah, it's easier than uh, Lightroom and tethering. Because you just open up a regular folder and go to work. Okay, anybody else? Yes? Absolutely. David, right? Yeah. I get that right? My memory shot. Um, so David asked about using a, a continuous light in the background. And you can absolutely do that. And how would you solve that, for example, with one of these rows? Um, so, so David wants to know if you're going to use a continuous light in the background, OK? So you can really control where you're going to put the light, all right? I would expose for that first and then expose for everything beyond that. So if, you're, um, if you want your exposure on the background to be, say, f8 at 200, OK? Then you're going to set your exposure there first, because that's not going to flash. It's going to just stay on. Right, but how would, you, how would you solve the actual, what kind of solution would you, would you comes to mind? Oh, for a light behind there? Yeah, yeah. So if I were to do that, I would probably use an Airy, an Airy 650. Okay. It gives you plenty of light, and you can dim it, and you have the barn doors on it. A-R-R-I. Oh, an Airy. Okay. Airy, yep. A-R-R-I. They're really inexpensive, a couple of 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Um, you can get grids for it. Um, it's a hot light, so um, it runs. You, know, you have to have gloves because it will get hot because it's just a tungsten bulb. Area 650, yeah. And you can get daylight balanced bulbs for it too, I believe. Okay, so we're going to jump into the XL Pro. Who else had a question before? I, yes. Um, I'm using a 24 to 70 f/4 lens. 70, yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm a recent Sony convert, so. My goal was to do a one camera, one lens solution until I really felt comfortable in the system. And then I would start buying other lenses. Um, I also have a son in college and a daughter right behind him. So we're kind of slowing down on the purchases. I uh, just wrote a tuition check. So um, 
I'm going to be going to the 70 to 200, and, which is my go-to with Nikon, and probably a 90 macro will be my full kit. But I, I love this little lens. It works great. If you're a Sony shooter, the 24 to 70 f4 is really a great lens. Um, it gets some um, half-hearted reviews. Uh, it's not built like a professional lens. It's built more like a consumer lens, but it has great, it, it shoots great, great color, great tone, great everything, contrast. All right, so um, this is what I recommend. So Phil, his, Phil's question is, what would you, if you're a complete beginner, what would you invest in first, right, basically? Yes. Okay, so I have the list. Uh, this is the light stand. This is what I've used for like eight or nine years. All right, so this light stand, this umbrella bracket. If you're shooting Nikon, Canon, Sony, whatever you're shooting, I always recommend to get at least one flash that's from your manufacturer. Because if you use it on the camera, it's mated to it, right? It's TTL uh, compatible. Um, it talks to one another easily. Once you go off the camera, any of the third-party brands are fine. Photix, Young, Nuo. Um, uh, I even shot Niwer. Ever hear of those? It's a uh, third-party brand. It's forty dollars for a speed light. If you burn it up, it's only forty bucks. But um, they're great second, third, and fourth lights. But always make sure you have one that mates to your camera. You know, just in case you're shooting events, TTL, you need something powerful, um, and it will speak to it. And that's about it. Get a decent trigger, Yongnuo trigger, Photix Aries, whatever is out there. Uh, the trigger systems have come a long way. When I first started, it was Pocket Wizard only at $189 for one. I own 10 of them. So I'm so really happy about these $60 jobs. Right, because you own 10 pocket wizards, that's, that's, that's a significant investment. Um, but they're so good now, and you can buy TTL systems uh, that are all radio controlled and built in. Very much like the, the Canon system has that built into the camera. You can buy triggers and, and uh, flashes that have it all done for you, all built in already. Which is really a great system, because it's come a long way since I started. All right, so I'm putting the strip grid on the XL Pro. So when you buy this, because this is the time that I sell out, because they are sponsoring me. When you buy this, you get the strip grid with it, which is awesome. Because we're all about light control, right? All about light control. I'm going to have you stand for this one. I don't want you to sit any longer. And we're going to start with the one, li the one light solution all over again. So Nikki's really tall, which is awesome. Totally awesome. We're going to go back to one quarter power. Right, we'll start at one quarter power. What do we say? And we'll slide this right over the head. Good trick here is to turn your head backwards because these are so heavy, OK? They're great because it'll literally fit in your back pocket or into a full flat to a camera bag, but they are kind of heavy. So when you put it on your speed light, if you roll your head around the opposite way, it won't want to flop down on you. There we go. Oops. Here, here. There we go. I'm going to give myself a nice shallow 45 degree kind of angle, right? A typical portrait shot. I'm going to slide you over that way just to touch on. Yeah, we're going to put this right here. Can you back up just a little bit? Yeah, right there. And. We're going to hit Nikki on this side. We'll isolate some of the background, and we'll see what we get. I want you to. <laughs> and I'm really good at that, so if you don't copy me. <laughs> All right, and look up towards the light. Yeah, we'll get you into the light. OK. So my shutter speed's still 200, because of course I'm getting shakier, 5.6. Um, ISO 100, and my power is back to 1 quarter. Ready, hon? What do we think? Yeah. Digging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally digging it, right? Yeah. You have a larger light source. Even though you have a gridded light source, your light is automatically softer because it's larger. awesome. I want everybody to say that. Larger. Awesome. OK. We have a strip grid. We've taken all the light off the background. We have this beautiful skin contrast to the dark background, the dark top. OK. Another great and simple black and white. All right. I want you to look right straight to me. Yeah. Pull your shoulder. I want you to move your shoulders. There we go. 
This is when I wish I had a tighter lens. Nice. I'm totally into that. You into that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have a simple light, right? One light source. Very beautiful, very elegant. All right. What I want to do is I'm going to change this completely. I'm going to move my light over to here. And we're going to side light just a little bit. All right, stay just like that. Yeah. I want you to look straight to me. I do. <laughs> it's the first time in a long time I've shot somebody <laughs> taller than me. Super dramatic. Do we like it? Ah, eh, I'm not all that keen on it because I don't see your face. Even if it's a split light thing, I want to see some of her face. Pull your hair off of your left side. Yep. And you have to back up just a touch because I can't move this forward with the, um, with the TV stand there. There we go. Yeah, just like that. Yep. Give me some. Pull the shoulders forward. There it is. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, getting there. Get your hair off of your face completely. Yeah, that's it, that's it, yeah. And look to this side, up a little bit. There we go. Chin down a touch, this way to me. Complete split light, see that? Who wanted a Rembrandt light? Who mentioned Rembrandt light? Blurry. Okay, now we're into Rembrandt light. See that on her left cheek, her right cheek rather? Okay, that's me getting old. Perfect. Split light, right? We have a very, very tightly controlled light source, all right? Um, it's not for everybody. I like it. I like the dramatic light, okay? I like her look. Um, she has this really beautiful chin line right here, right? Great lips. You have great lips. Yeah. I'm going to bring this back out to here because I want to put more light on her face. I don't think that this is okay, but really not really working for me. You guys? Okay. Yeah, kind of okay and not really working for me. What if you turned her full profile with the light just behind her? With the light where it we can do that. Yeah. Can you just light over that way a little bit? Now turn to that way complete. Yeah, right there. Take your hair off of your right side of your face. That's awesome, yeah. Pull your hair off completely. So both sides off to your shoulder, yeah. Behind my ears or in front of my ears? Uh, in front of your ears. I don't want to see your ears. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them, per se. <laughs> they are ears. Yep, see, so just like that. Look over to here. Is it not sharp on the screen or is it me? I can't see anything because it's not on my screen. No, Looks good. It's not sharp. It's nice. It's nice. I mean, probably the it's the screen. I can't see. This screen is not. Okay. Let's take a look. I know. Now, what you want, Charles? I'm into that. You guys? Yeah. Let's go back to that single. Yeah, right to there. There we go. That way a little bit. Yeah, right there. No, no, you, uh, just turn that way. That's what we want. That's what we want. I, I'm, I like it. You guys like it? Yeah. I'm not too good with that horror thing. That's a little too much for me. <laughs> That's a little way too much for me. OK, so now let's change. I'm going to bring this light back over to the front, OK? I'm going to bring this light back over to the front, and we're going to change our look overall. I'm going to flat light her just a touch, OK? So can you sit down again for me? Do you want that chair back, or are you good? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. 
let's see what we get here. I'm going to flat light just a little bit. Let's see. I may have to go to the opposite side. Sorry. There we go. And you have to slide over that way a little bit. Yep. Let's see what we get here. Try something new. Okay, what do we have to do? Push power up. Yeah, definitely have to push power up. So in this case, we will <coughs> drop this down. You know what I'm going to do? I know what we're going to do. Stand up. Take the chair with you, please. Go right to the background. Okay. Yep, all the way to the background. So when you, when you sit on it, you're almost touching it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because we're right, th right through the window. <laughs> You can put your leg on that chair if you like. Perfect. Oh, that's awesome. OK. So I, a lot of my professional work um, has a commercial feel to it. right? I like commercial looks. I like editorial looks. Um, my, a lot of my work has a commercial edge to it. So what I want to do is we're going to light Nikki right up against the wall. I'm going to push this up back up to one quarter power. Right? Is that where we were? Yeah, one quarter power. We're going to raise our light up. Just a touch. I'm going to shoot right in between here. And I'm going to give a, drop, a short drop shadow. Um, so we'll get some butterfly light, and we'll get a drop shadow on the background. So I'm at 200 shutter speed. Make sure at 5.6 quarter power. Put your hand on here. I want some that's it, that's it. If you can bring your, yeah, right there. It has exposure, good? <laughs> Exposure's not good. It has to go up a little bit, doesn't it? Yep. I'm at a quarter power, 200 shutter speed, 5.6. What am I gonna do to bring that exposure up? 160, or I may go to half power here. Let's boost the power up. We'll stick with power first. I know, I'm at the edge. I taped it on, thank you. I almost tripped on it. Yeah, would you hold that, Charles? Thank you. <coughs> One half power. Right there. Yeah, and something, even, uh, there you go, or even um, put that arm up and lean into it like this. That's it. Oh, I guess awesome. Thank you, sir. Cool. What do we think? It's a cool shot. It's a cool shot. Well, like, what do we think? What do we, what do we think of the drop shadow? Works. It's, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. If you don't like it, it's okay. You don't have to like it. Do you guys like it or not? Yeah. 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 Like Go ahead. Contrast. What if you like had the lighting this way? This you're shooting exactly as you're shooting, but then move the ground a little bit. Oh, we can definitely move the light around. Effects with that with the lighting. We're gonna flatten this out just a little bit more. Bring some more background in. Perfect, just like that. You know Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> what do we think? I'm digging it. I like it. I like the one light solution. Okay, this is a one light headshot style portrait against a flat white backdrop. This is even white, it's some kind of nasty screen. Okay, I've shot against this multiple times. Uh, I like the look. I like these a little bit better. We're a little fuller, there's more body in here, okay. Perfect, yep, yeah, right to me, right there, awesome. <coughs> One thing that I love about this camera is uh, the focus points go all the way out to the corners. So I'm gonna, I don't know if I can come out this far. Ooh, 
Oops. Okay, so I can crop as I feel. I would much prefer, I like the, I, I don't mind the cropped forehead, but uh, I think I like this shot better when she's fuller, right? I have her whole head, I have her upper body. I like, I like the look, it's really a great, simple look. <laughs> yeah, let's try it again. We need to be more modely now. Oh, Marilyn Monroe, Channel Marilyn, Jane Mansfield. Okay. <laughs> Joan Crawford. <laughs> Do you know any of those names? Oh my God, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah, right there, right there, because there are so many gals who come through are like, who? <laughs> Perfect. Now swing around to me. Head right, right there, right there. Perfect. I'm gonna go in, let's touch tight, hang on. Nice. Bingo! Bingo was his name, oh, I like that one a lot. Great expression, right? Where's the hand? Side. If you're gonna put the hand in, try and get it to the side, right? Tug at your ear. And just tug your ear, like you're fixing your, like you're fixing your uh, earring, even though there's not one there. Right, tug at the ear. Grab the hair a little bit, okay. Hand to the side, All right? Not this, okay? Stuff like that. It's too teenagery. We don't want that. You're a beautiful young woman. Let's go. Are you ready? How's her hand look? Looks good in the photo. All right. Do me a favor. Go like this. <laughs> okay, we don't like that, right? Keep the keep the hands on edge. Keep them hidden, right? A good thing, tug at the tug, tug at your earring, right? It puts especially with long hair. Even that's a good post take, just like that. here all day. <laughs> right? Another very simple pose. Nothing crazy. <laughs> awesome, great smile. Okay? We have some butterfly light. We have a lot of shadowy light. So when she smiles, that fills up her cheek. See that? See how her cheeks get filled up with light here? Okay? Nice, nice, nice. Very nice, very simple. Not for the, no, 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 no. Awesome. Right? Great hands, great eyes, great cheeks. She has this beautiful expression, wonderful lips. Nice. I like that one a lot. That one, too. I even like that one. With blonde hair, she could be Farrah Foster. Who said that? I grew up with that poster. I definitely had that poster on my wall. I was thinking Jerry Hall. Really? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, for Ferris, you'd have to have blonde hair. Yeah. But yeah. That's a very famous poster for another <coughs> reason. Anybody know why? Anybody, everybody knows the Farrah Fawcett poster, right, we're talking about? It's a very famous poster because normally posters were outtakes. So in other words, a, co a rock band would have their photo taken, and then any poster was an outtake from the shoot. This was the first time ever that a photographer was hired specifically to shoot a poster. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that, that and a million other things that get you nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm I like these a lot. I love the single light. Um, I love the single light uh, solution. I love the fact that we have this really great drop shadow. We have some stuff we can clean up on the right side up there because that's just the background, the, the light passing through the background and bouncing back because it's glass back there. Um, and it's really not a great background. I wouldn't normally choose that, but I don't have a choice. Right, you, this is one of those items where you get what you're given and you have to work with it, okay? Um, which I don't mind, I enjoy the challenge. Uh, yes, what's your name? Ann. Ann. Uh, question about the strip light, is the grid removable? 
the grid is not removable. You can remove the strip, but the grid itself uh, stays in place. We're going to take this down. So you can take this panel off. OK, exactly. Or you can shoot. Another great way to shoot, we'll shoot some broad light now. Even though we're on grids, we have this set up. Um, this lighting system is really unique in that it really mimics a beauty dish. So if you've ever shot anything with a beauty dish, you know the lighting style. It's kind of hard and kind of soft all at the same time, right? And this really mimics that. It's really kind of amazing. So we'll shoot this look one last time, and then we'll wrap it up with a Q&A, and we'll shoot it beauty dish style, all right? So like I said, my, my work kind of tends toward the commercial look. I love the beauty dish. I love the beauty dish. It is my go-to modifier. If I had one modifier to carry, it would be that one. Uh, I think it's so versatile. Uh, the Fotix beauty dish that they sell here, the Fotix Luna, is really awesome because um, it folds down to a cone. And actually, after you open it, you can use it as a full dish. But you, put, you take all the things that you do to fold it down, and you fold it down to a snoot. So you have a really tight source of light, or you can have that big, broad source of light. The beauty dish is one of my favorite things ever to use. Um, on my Christmas wish list is the Mola beauty dish, but we'll have to see how that goes this year. See if Santa likes me. OK, everything's the same. All we did was change the modifier from the strip to the dish. OK, we have a lot more exposure to deal with, don't we? OK, so since we are here, I'm just going to, that's about a 2 thirds stop. I'm just going to adjust my aperture to 7-1. Uh, Let's see what we get, because it's quick and we're running out of time. I'll make sure there's enough time for everything. <laughs> That should be it right there. Still a little hot. Nice. OK. So it's a, the shadows are different. See how, how the shadows are softer? OK. But you're still getting, this is the dish look. The shadows are softer behind her, but you're still getting this butterfly light and the deeper shadow here, OK? But the edges are softer, all right? I love this kind of look. You put a reflector under there, and you got a, a atypical beauty style headshot that you can do with a speed light and a reflector, over and under. You can add a second light if you wanted to. I tend to lean towards a reflector. Um, white foam core is like the best reflector out there, and it's only a few bucks from your local craft shop, CVS, or whatever. You know, a 20 by 30 piece will run you a couple of bucks. Put some tin foil on the opposite side. I use packing tape, right, because it's clear tape. And you have a double-sided reflector for under $5. All right? You would have, I could have her hold it. She could hold it right here underneath. <laughs> or you can put it on a light stand or a table, OK? Actually, no, no, let's go with that. OK, ready? Take a few more. Yep, put your arm here. I want to I broaden your upper torso. That's it. Now bring that hand down and put it on your butt. There it is. But lean back a touch. There we go. Are we going to exposure still? Yeah. That last one come in. Come on, wake up. There it is. There it is. Nice. Nice. Bring this arm sit just like that. Yeah, bring this arm over and put both arms in your lap. There we go. Nice. All right. So it goes to retouch. We're ready to go out to our magazine cover. Done. Simple, quick, and easy, right? The one light solution. Uh, I prefer the soft box. I think it's a nicer, cleaner look. Good exposure top to bottom, OK? I just switched over to Bowens, so I'm using a Bowens Lumiere 20 by 30 softbox. So the, the Bowens mount, the Bowens speed light mount is called the S mount, and this is a third party S mount, so you can swap 
uh, anything with an S mount speed, speed ring. So the Bowen soft boxes, what drew me to them was that it's the only soft box that I could find that comes with a speed ring. You all know what that is? Okay, usually you buy a soft box, then you have to buy a speed ring, all right? Bowen's comes with a speed ring already in the package. And then you buy this, this is um, a third party, I got it online, it's called a Godox, G-O-D-O-X, takes the S mount, and I can unclick the soft box, I can click on a beauty dish, unclick that, I can click on a grid, I can click on a seven inch reflector, I can click on a regular steel or metal beauty dish, okay, all with a speed light. It is an awesome system, I just started uh, putting it together about a month ago. Um, because I'm revamping my whole lighting system. And beyond speed lights, I'm going over to Bowens. And that's the reason why. Because on Profoto, I had a box, I had a box like this, of adapters that I bought online, adapters that I made, stuff that worked, stuff that didn't work, stuff that made my stuff fall off the light stand and break and got thrown around the room. And I had all this junk, right, just junk. And when I realized that I can buy a $20 bracket and buy a soft box with a speed ring already in it, boom, I was there. And it's $144 here for the 20 by 30 soft box with the speed ring. And that is a steal, that is a bargain. And it does a great job. And you can put it right into a bag and carry it with you. So Mark asked, um, in a couple of previous photos, I had used a Matthews Hollywood grip arm. And that's a standard uh, grip arm within the industry. You'll find them everywhere. It's 40 inches long. Um, I prefer Matthews because they're stainless steel uh, and you can cut them. So I regularly cut my arms if I have to uh, squeeze them into a space, okay? Uh, you can use it on one of these stands uh, with a light modifier. I would not put a soft box or a beauty dish on it. These are not heavy enough to support that weight. I would use a C stand or a regular A stand, you know, a Manfrotto A stand. Uh, but any of the brands, American Grip, uh, Kupo, M Matthews, uh, Manfrotto, uh, Avenger, uh, which is just a higher end brand of Manfrotto. So you have a bunch of different choices to go from. And everything, they have everything here. Um, even if you walk out to the used department, there's a ton of stuff in the used department. You can actually go see it. They have auto poles, they have everything down there. All right. Um, that I would use on a larger stand, only because of the weight distribution. You're pushing a lot of weight off one side. Okay. Get yourself some sandbags. If you look up here under the TV, there's two impact sandbags. They're really cheap, like uh, 10, 12, 15 bucks for a couple of sandbags. Go to, uh, I know you guys don't, have, well, you can probably go to Far Rock, the Rockaways to get some sand, right? Or Coney Island. Or just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy some play sand. Get clean sand, don't use beach sand. Show any bugs in there. I use beach sand, I live across here from the beach, but I don't care. Um, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get some play sand, stick it in, and get yourself a couple of sandbags that weight things down for yourself. I think that's it. Are we good? Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.